Pediatric Department of College of Medicine of Suleiman University to be part of your uh, activities in Basra University, uh, College of Medicine, uh, Pediatric uh, Department. And thanks for the Atino uh, company for sponsoring uh, such a scientific event. Um, my you are topic, welcome. Thank you. Um, um, really, uh, my topic is a topic that uh, that's the, on daily practice, uh, which is a ventricular septal defect, and that defect is in a hole between the two ventricles. Um, so today we are discussing the clinical scenarios that we may face in our daily practice. Um, okay, uh, next slide. So. Um, before before um, uh, going to the scenarios, we should uh, we should know some uh, details about the um, the pathophysiology of VSD. Uh, the pathophysiology depends on the shunt, which is the left to right shunt at first. Then it may reverse later on in life. So uh, it depends on the following factors: one, the size of the VSD then the pulmonary vascular resistance, and then associated uh, obstruction. I mean, if there is PS or AS. And uh, lastly, not the least, is the location of the VSD. And uh, if, uh, if you look to this uh, um, uh, a short video, it, we will see that the shunt will go from the left to the right uh, uh, continuously. So eventually the left side will be over, uh, uh, overloaded by returning from the lung. So many people asking about why the left side is uh, dilated, uh, uh, although we have left to right shunt, but uh, the, the reasons that is the pulmonary flow will be increased. So the return from the lung to the left side will be increased eventually you will have dilated left side. Um, then uh, next slide. So um, on, on the, uh, if you look to the natural history of the VSDs, the VSD, the small one, will most of them either it's spontaneously closed or they, there will be asymptomatic presentation or they, they may have symptoms later on in life, even in, in those patients growing up with congenital heart defect reach their uh, childbearing age, especially female patients. But the large one, they will present with your, with the uh, or repeated uh, in chest infections, hepatomegaly sign of heart failure, and they will present with failure to thrive. And eventually the pulmonary pressure will increase and become right to left sh uh, shunt and become easier physiology. Uh, and uh, accordingly, according to this knowledge, I would like to present my first case. Uh, he's the one month old baby, 3.1 kilogram male infant, admitted for cough and fever and uh, um, Sorry, just to remove this. Uh, admitted for uh, difficulty of breath and the symptoms start two weeks ago um, and the parents were referred for hospital uh, by the uh, external physician. An examination with fall asleep. And there is palpable uh, liver. And on oscillation, there is a pan systolic murmur in lower left sternal uh, uh, laboratory um, investi investigation. Most of the lab uh, shows normal findings. Then the, uh, the blood pressure, the fit for the age, the heart rate is taking. And if you look, there is a bit cardiomegaly ECG, 
you, you will see a, a finding which is diaphasic QR complex in the mid pericardial leads, which is called cas wassel phenomena, which is the sign of biventricular failure. Uh, eventually, uh, the ECODAN and it shows that there is a, a, a huge uh, 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 or between two ventricles. This is the left side, and that's the right side of the heart. This is LV, that's RV, so the hole in between. Uh, and the, uh, there is also dilated left side with dilated pulmonary arteries. Uh, then the plan of this patient is to give medications in the form of diuretics and AC inhibitor and weight management because those patients that are not gaining weight properly, so we should guide them how to fit and which kind of way to fit. And because they, most of the time they will tire, so, so you, should need, you should give frequent uh, uh, short-lived feeding. And there should be caring of those patients. Uh, you, you should, I mean, take care of those people, uh, not kept, uh, kept in the crowded places, and then they plan to do surgery as soon as possible. Uh, uh, the weight and the place is allowed. Our scenario for the same presentation, but that patient is asymptomatic with the same age, very asymptomatic patient uh, come across during a uh, uh, check and you hear there is a high pitched short systolic mpx of the heart not cyanotic and the liver is normal and the chest x-ray also showing normal finding and on echo uh, it shows restrictive apical muscular vsd which showed here that's a small one this is the left side of the heart that's the right side of the heart and the hole which is a small hole in the muscle part of the septum uh, in which that patient clinically not, uh, uh, they are asymptomatic, but uh, on, uh, on examination, you hear that murmur. And the plan for this patient is to just watch for the, watch that patient. And eventually when you have a, 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 the, the big enough to have a dental prophylaxis. We have the case three scenario five years old male presented with a history of tachypnea and exertional dyspnea. He's a known case of ventricular septal defect since birth. And they were told that the VSD is small at that time and restrictive and just need follow yearly. That's, they were told. And not on any treatment and no prior history of cardiac failure. Now uh, they present to you in different way, which is a white pulse pressure. So when you examine it, there is a white pulse pressure. There's tachypnea, tachycardia, forceful impulse with, with pericardial heaving. And uh, on auscultation, you hear a murmur, lower left sternal border, and diastolic murmur at aortic area. Then Sorry, I should. Uh, this is an echo of that patient. Just to see. Yeah. Um, so if you look here to, uh, I don't know why the cursor is not, sorry, for the video, it's a V here, that's a VSD. And the aortic valve comes in inside the defect. So uh, let's see if it's working. Um, it's not working, sorry. Then uh, here, uh, I would like to show you in diagram what happens. Uh, there was a VSD in which the aortic cause prolapsed inside it, so it become restrictive. That's why at first they said it was restrictive, but eventually when the time elapsed, then the pulmonary, uh, the aortic cause, which is usually the right, right cusp go inside the defect and become, uh, it showed a restrictive pattern, but in reality, it's a big defect. Um, and if you look to the uh, uh, color Doppler here, 
uh, there is an AR, aortic regurgitation, uh, when, you when you palpate the pulse, radial pulse, you found there's a white pulse pressure. So that was the mechanism of the white, uh, white pulse pressure. And so the diagnosis here is different in which it's a prolapsed coronary cusp to the VSD, make it restrictive complete, and then complicated by aortic regurgitation. And so the plan here is to give anti-failure medication in the form of ACN diuretics, then sent uh, 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 for cardiac cardiology and cardiac surgery consultation for doing cardiac surgery. Uh, case four scenario in which your patient is 10 years old male presented with exertional dyspnea. He's pink at rest, but cannot claim like his peers. He's a known case of ventricular septal defect diagnosed five years back. So there was no consultation at all in the last five years. Not on any treatment, no prior history of any kind of surgeries. So your patient on examination looks dusky, blue discoloration of lips, hand, and tongue, the pulse rate 95, regular rhythm, small volume, the blood pressure slightly low, and the right upper limb in supposition, and the JVP was raised. Uh, so on auscultation, there's a loud second half sound with functional mid-diastolic and at the pulmonary area with early diastolic murmur. Um, on ECG, you are tracing ECG for that patient. It shows right axis deviation, if you look here, right axis deviation, right atrial enlargement, and right ventricular hypertrophy, um, and right ventricular strain pattern. Uh, so inverted T wave in anterior leads. And the chest. Uh, dilated pulmonary corners with, uh, with the right side enlargement of the heart with increased pulmonary marking. And on echo finding, the VS, there, is, there was a VSD with dilated right side, dilated pulmonary artery, and severe TR. Eventually, this, page, this patient going to Eisenberger physiology in which the shunt reverse from the left to right shunt into a right to left shunt. And eventually there will be mixing at the level of the uh, ventricle, left ventricle. And so the desaturated blood goes to the, uh, in which shows by this picture. So the plan for this patient is not to do surgery, to give medication, instead of, because uh, so many times we are facing this problem. Uh, um, uh, the society secondary to yeah, but only iron deficiency. So you should replace iron to, don't, to, to not let the PCB to become high. So that's our job here. And then sometimes they need oxygen on off or maybe it's not. The scenario of uh, case number five, in which you have a seven year old male presented with two weeks history of an fever, the noun case of ventricular septal defect, diagnosed six years back, uh, not on any treatment, no any uh, history of cardiac failure and surgeries. Um, he is moderately built and nourished, conscious, wall, non palpable, then there is no radio femoral, radio, uh, radio, radial radio femoral delay, and the blood pressure was okay. And the right upper limb in supine position, and JVP is not test. Uh, on auscultation, there is a S1, S2 is here clearly, and there is a harsh pansystolic memory, three over six intensity here at a lower left external border with maximal intensity at the third and fourth intercostal space. Uh, P2 component loud in the pulmonary area and 
uh, uh, respiratory system and nervous system are all okay. Some investigation for that patient and it shows that uh, the total count is less than for age and neutrophilia with ESR slightly high, uh, anemia and platelet is normal. And on echo, you show, uh, it shows that the global hypoclinemia is a submembrane membrane is VSD. So that's the uh, case with the visitation attached to the aortic valve, which causing severe AR that make uh, LV to become dilated and the last diagnosis was infective endocarditis. In this case, you are given medication for two weeks and then you will wait for the result. If uh, accordingly, uh, my friend will go in detail with that patient. Um, the case scenario number six, and this is the last case scenario in which uh, a 15 year old female with history of perimembranous VSD was on yearly follow up no surgery, no any uh, problem with the last 15 years. Her mother said that she told by the cardiologist that does not need any anything, routine echo follow up done, and she gradually developed shortness of breath. And she was told that her complaint has no direct relation with cardia, and she just needs infective endocarditis prophylaxis. On examination of pericardium uh, was very quiet, on escaltation, there was an ejection stolic murmur, grade three over six at sternal border area, that area, the area between the pulmonary and the tricusp area. So um, the ECG shows sinus rhythm with the right, uh, right bundle branch block and right axis deviation. Then what do you expect on the TE? So we did, uh, 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 an echo for that patient, and it showed that there is a muscle ridge below the pulmonary valve formed. So uh, the RV become double chambered. So that the double chamber RV is an uncommon congenital anomaly, an anomalous muscle band that cross the RV from the septum to the posterior wall. So it's divided the right ventricle into two chambers. And it commonly associates and uh, associated with other congenital defects, and most frequently is the VSD, in which eventually, when the VSD try to heal itself, it it causing the muscle to be formed uh, below the valve uh, by some distance, so it make the arteries. So in this case, we decide to do surgical intervention because. Uh, uh, there is no way to be resolved by itself. And sometimes you give beta blocker for the symptomatology. Uh, um, the attendance, and that's the view of my seat. Uh, I hope uh, everybody to be someday here to have. Uh, uh, on site conference. Here. Thank you for your. Thank you.